When it comes to new games, there's always a tip or trick you wish you had known just a bit sooner. Well, never fear, we're here to spill some secrets. Hello friends, it's Kodiak here, one half of the team behind Legacy Gaming, and today we're sharing everything we wish we had known sooner about Outriders. Let's start with this fascinating little tidbit. Players looking to change up their firing shoulder can swap sides with just the push of a button. As a right-handed, left-eye dominant weirdo, I've always preferred shooting off my right shoulder, but if you're someone that wants to change up perspectives, you can do that. This is doubly effective when trying to get sight lines while in cover. For PC players, all you need to do is tap the middle mouse button, but for console players, head into your menus and check out the controller settings. It's gonna be a bit different for every system. This may not be a life or death tip, but it's good knowledge to have in a pinch. That middle mouse button is sneaky, and curious players may have also noticed that while scoping with a bolt-action sniper rifle, you can actually change the zoom. It's a pretty quick process with no real restrictions, and it makes bolt-action sniper rifles just a bit more reliable in mid-range and long-range encounters. I should note, though, that the automatic sniper rifles do not come with this feature. Those weapons have a fixed scope. This next tip I think a lot of players are going to discover by themselves, but in case you missed it, here you go. Don't sleep on your melee abilities. While Outriders is all about running and gunning, you can still deal quite a bit of damage with your melee attacks. While standing still, you do a simple punch in a cone infused with whatever anomaly status effect is associated with your class. If you're sprinting and then hit the melee button, you'll do a sort of running slam that deals true AoE damage infused with your anomaly status. This is wildly effective for staggering enemies that get close, or just finishing off an enemy while your gun is reloading. I was really surprised to see how effective the melee attacks were in the game, and for something that's talked about once in the prologue, it's definitely a technique you shouldn't forget about. Since we're talking about ripping apart our enemies with anomaly abilities, let me fill you in on an observation I had. I main a trickster, and oftentimes when I'm using slow trap, body parts will linger even after their host has been killed. Those parts will collide with your bullets, stopping damage if you're trying to shoot someone or something behind it. This was a major frustration during the demo when I was farming captains, but once I realized what was going on, it was easy enough to sidestep flying bodies to hit my intended targets. This is one of those things the game is never going to tell you, but a keen eye will recognize when you're not doing as much damage as you should be. Basically, what I'm saying here is watch out for the tricksters. You never know when their anomaly powers could be working against you. Speaking of anomaly powers working against you, let's talk about status effects, one of those boring topics you're bound to doze off listening about, but easily the most important aspect of combat you need to understand. The long and short of it is this. The more status effects you apply to a target, the more of a resistance they have to your abilities. That means the more you pump those fire, frost, and toxic abilities into an elite enemy, the sooner they'll come to resist everything and beat your ass with impunity. The real tip is this. Pay attention to that swirly icon on the left side of an elite enemy. When it's white, that means you can interrupt that enemy, disrupting special abilities, rendering them useless. When the swirly icon is blue, that means they're immune to status effects, including interrupts. When an enemy is immune, nothing will stop them except cold steel. Bullets still work and existing effects still tick down, but all those new slows, stuns, and bleeds, nothing will matter. If you want to know the inner workings of status effects, and trust me, you do, definitely check out Livid's full guide on statuses in the game. It's one of the most important videos you'll watch on Outriders. Trust. By now, you probably know that Outriders is all about collecting mods, but what you may not know is that there's an easy way to identify what mods you already have banked in your collection. By hovering over an item in your inventory, you'll notice this window-looking icon next to a mod that's already in your library. It's not a mind-blowing trick, but it'll give you a little peace of mind when it comes to selling or scrapping your gear. In the same kind of vein, you may notice that occasionally an item is highlighted in red when you hover over it. This is really important to pay attention to because it lets you know that you have overlapping mods and that the effect is being wasted. In Outriders, you can't stack the exact mod on multiple pieces of gear. You have to be smart and piece them together like a puzzle. This is really only important on the armor pieces, especially when it comes to those class-specific mods. You can opt to augment gear to really boost a specific ability by using all of the mods for that skill, 
but you can't use the exact same one to stack the effect. Just pay attention to your mods and remember, red means stop, so if you see this, take a second and reorganize your gear. This next tip is less about giving you a hot take on something and more about making you aware of the relationship between loot and the various resources in the game. At this time, scrap is easily the most important resource. That's the money currency in Outriders. Scrap is used to purchase a number of things, including weapons, armor, and even other resources like titanium, an all-important material that allows you to upgrade the level of your weapons and armor. You can farm for any of those basic resources like iron, leather, and even titanium, but you can also purchase them with scrap once you reach the end of the campaign. The tricky thing here is understanding when you should use the vendor to buy and sell, and when you should just straight up dismantle an item. The first rule of thumb is to think about the mods first. If you don't have a particular mod bank, you should always prioritize dismantling that item before selling it. You never know when you're going to see that mod again, and it could come in handy when progressing or doing expeditions. The second thing is to consider if you've invested any shards into that item you're about to sell. Shards are valuable resources that allow you to raise the attributes of a piece of gear. Each piece is assigned a different random attribute when they drop, and it's the only true RNG component in the game. If you invest shards into an item to raise a particular attribute and then sell that item, you lose all the shards, but if you dismantle that item, you get it all back. The game even warns you that you're about to do this, but it's still easy to miss. I should also point out that dismantling items is the only way to get new shards that you can use to raise attributes on other items via the crafting system. But as long as you don't sell items that have a ton of shards invested into them, you should be fine. If none of what I just said is a factor, it's almost always more valuable to sell a weapon for scrap, which will allow you to purchase resources instead of farming them. You may even find a nice epic weapon that's an upgrade. There is a balance here though, and each player is going to have to figure out for themselves what feels right, whether it's farming, selling, or dismantling. This next tip is a two-for-one special and something that may be pretty obvious to some, but more casual players will definitely miss. If you're looking to start a new character, consider using your stash to move your weapons around. No, not because of the guns themselves, but because of the mods. Each character has to build up their own mod library. It's not shared, but there's nothing stopping you from dismantling guns that are too powerful to use. This is a great way to gain access to those powerful mods that could make progression that much easier. It may feel a bit cheesy, but hey, the devs knew what they were doing. You might also be interested to know that each class has an aptitude for finding guns of a specific type. For instance, all classes can spec into Assault Master and gain a 20% increased chance of finding assault-based weapons. Each class also has their own specific weapon mastery. For example, Tricksters can get Shotgun Mastery for an improved 20% chance to find shotguns. Each of the four classes excels at finding certain items that synergize with their class, and if you're on the hunt for specific legendaries or even epic upgrades, this may just be the key to making sure you grab the exact gun type that you want. Another quick tip for you here, and you may have even picked up on this during the demo, but auto loot is your best friend when progressing, especially if you're playing co-op. When loot drops, don't run over it, don't die, that's just silly, that takes way too long. Just hit your H key on a keyboard or down on the D-pad to pick up any items out of range. This is a great trick if time is as valuable to you as it is to us, and you can even use it to pick up quest keys. We're not talking about life or death here, but we're definitely talking about picking up the pace of your game. Let's talk about aggro, or the ability to draw enemy fire. It's not an exact science in Outriders, but there is something you should know about the process. According to the developers, there is no official aggro or threat meters, but players that are closer to enemies will almost always draw their fire. This is especially useful for co-op players that are dealing with higher scaling in their games. Livin and I chose to run as a trickster-technomancer combination, because neither of us was a true tank, we would often use our bodies as a way to help mitigate damage for the other player. It's one of those less than obvious tricks that may just help you when playing with friend. If you're looking to cruise right to expeditions, getting there is a straight shot. Now seriously, if you want to level up quick and reach the end of the game, the solution is simple. Just do the main quest. While this one may seem obvious, it's easy to get distracted with side missions and random lore elements scattered around the world. There's nothing stopping you from going back to enjoy those after the fact, and honestly, it's probably better that you do, because the gear will be more relevant at that point. The sad truth is this, you can take your time and enjoy the game, absolutely, but once you reach the end game, you're playing at a different level, and if you don't have the weapons or gear to handle that, 
Your only option is to go farm endlessly. If you choose to skip some or all of that side quest content, you can return to those areas at a much higher level and world tier and claim much better rewards that are directly going to impact your expedition progress. It's a bit of a roundabout way of doing things, but it makes sense in our minds. We're always looking for that path to progression, and by saving some of the more optional content for later, we're actually putting ourselves in a much stronger position when it comes to pushing endgame down the line. In our case, when we reached the finale of the game, we were at world tier 10 at around level 28. Taking into consideration, we didn't do a single side quest, didn't manipulate the world tiers at all during progression, but we did die a small handful of times. So there you have it, a metric ton of tips and tricks that actually matter, not some cookie cutter nonsense you've heard a thousand times in other videos. If you found just one of these tips helpful, we need your help. Hit that thumbs up button in the bottom corner, and of course subscribe so you never miss a new legacy video. You can also join us on Discord. We've got a great community of over 6,000 members with over 400 of them in there just for Outriders. So check out that link below and join today. My name is Kodiak and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.